Oh, and you know, it's good to see this number of people back. All the way from Canada. <laughs> I was telling the other day they weren't even heading in there without quarantine. <laughs> I've been saying for years you should be quarantined. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we have visitors today, and uh, I hope they become regular members. Now, uh, back here is Frank and Long. You know, they came, I think, two weeks, and then there was a pandemic. <laughs> Now, I'm not blaming them, <laughs> but it was a strange relationship with them. I don't know. But back, back here, we got the shipments that are checking us out. I think they're former uh, members at the uh, memorial. And uh, some of you know my wife hangs out over there occasionally <laughs> on Thursdays. <laughs> You know, I know she and Kathy become that. But uh, that's Wayne and Kathy. And then uh, Jim and Jennifer Warren. They're over in this corner. Have you met the emphasis behind you? Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't move the other side of the room. Sounds right. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> I stay in trouble. What can I say? Uh, there's two troublemakers for you over there. I'll be a friend. And, uh, okay. Where are they? The Birches. Bob and Alicia. Okay. And that back there. Good to have you with us. I hope to see you all back again. Uh, Anybody got any news? Mm -hmm. I got, I got a, no, uh, Paul said I can't, I can't give uh, Larry any more time than I give him, and I only give Paul 10 minutes on each of the kids. I'm going to give Larry more today. So, no announcements, no, nothing new. What you say, Bob? Why is that mic so bad? Because they don't have it hooked up right. The mic is just for the PA system. They're just listening. They're making me listen. Uh, uh, tell me his name again. Gray Jones. Gray Jones. Okay. Alex and, Jen Alex and Jenny Jones here. They have a little boy who was born with some digestive problems. Okay. He's going to have surgery for that. Yes. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you to pray in that, I'll show you included on that, okay? Anybody else? I'm thinking about uh, Mary and Jerry Bryant and Teddy and, uh, and Mary Ann Sipes and Billy and Dave Miller and the whole Ferrara family. Help me with that. You usually help me. Except when I get up here, you like me to stand and look like a fool. <laughs> it's my job. I know it's my job. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, you know what I mean? Anybody? Dixie and Dixie still need to pray. Dixie needs to pray. Yeah. 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 Natalie Hartman, okay. We have Natalie Hartman. Anybody else? Okay, Bob, did you offer a prayer for us? Our Father, we come to you this morning as a very grateful people for all the opportunities that you've given us, the blessings you've given us. Obviously, we're aware of the challenges that we faced this last year, for the losses we've had, some precious people that are not with us today. We thank you that you're our Father and you care about our concerns. You've heard us discussing those of our friends and loved ones who are facing physical challenges, 
Some are facing loneliness. Some are facing some very difficult uh, days ahead. We ask you to bless us. Bless those individuals, particularly those families. Bless the caregivers that look after each individual situation. We thank you that we live in a country where there are so many medical benefits available to us. We recognize that other places in the world aren't as fortunate, and we ask you to be with those as well. Father, we thank you for those of our number who are working on our behalf in other parts of the world who are not only isolated because of distances, but because of the pandemic, haven't been able to revisit back home. For those of us who have friends and loved ones in other countries, the separation has been difficult. But we know that we are aware of each situation and have a blessing in store for all. We ask you to bless us as we continue and we begin to continue our meeting together as classes. We thank you for those who prepare each week to present excellent lessons for us. Help us to take advantage of those opportunities, those lessons, those thoughts make us better pleasing in your sight so that we might not only be pleasing to you but an example a signpost to those around us that they too will avail themselves of the blessings that come to us through Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you through his name. Amen. Well, as Dick said, uh, we do have people on Zoom who are watching this and uh, did you happen to notice how many was on there? My number? I'm just curious. I'm it out. Okay. Not for the call. I'm going to call the Zoom. I'm going to see if it's there. Zoom. As Nick mentioned, he has the mic. And so when you make your comments, you know, you raise your hand. Get the mic to you. And it is very, let me stress that again, it is very important to have comments today. And if you all aren't sharing today, this is going to be a real short class. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, uh, I'm not like many preachers. When I run out of words, I sit down. You know. uh, and then we'll have fellowship. That's the kind of the way class is. Uh, as you can see, our theme is in Psalms, is Psalms 46. But the main theme is be still and know. Uh, Ari said, well, are you going to sing that song today? No. Anybody in the class that wants to lead that song, so uh, we'll dispense with uh, the still and know uh, God. But I think probably we'll sing the song in the head as I, as I speak. Okay, uh, besides the green flickering, what do you see? Um, water. God in our lives. Uh, I don't know about you, but mine's out of focus. <laughs> That's the way I feel half the time about me, my life. You know, it's out of focus. So, most of the summer things I see, and uh, hopefully that, that winter will continue. But as I mentioned, there are sharing of today's lesson. Hopefully you'll share. We have two questions. First one is, was there a specific time in your life when you realized that you needed to be still 
dados ou que You would think that the, at the time of our life, as we're sitting on this room, that all of us would have faced a time when we lived on this room alone in control. Raising children, losing family members, losing jobs, having to move to a different country, a different, you know, at our age. We've all been through those kinds of things, but we realize that we need to just let God take care of the next step. And that's true, and that's what hopefully some of you might want to share that story later on. I'm going to share my story, but hopefully you won't be willing to share yours. And the second question is, uh, the specific time is meditate on spiritual medicine. This is a very special time of the day and night that you spend in meditation. So that's kind of the second question we're going to explore a little bit about meditation and when you do it, how do you do it? So two things. I'll talk about my time and hopefully you will be willing to share your time. Okay. Well, <coughs> Before we get into Psalm 46, we want to go that way. And Psalms were songs. That's what we mean, songs. And that the book of Psalms were kind of the praise of the Jewish people. And some of these songs and specifics, specifically this one, uh, was used uh, as the children of Jerusalem. There's a group of Jewish people that came to Jerusalem and singing this song, Psalm 46. Also, one of the writers said that it was customary that when they took the steps up to the temple, they would sing this song as well. I might say, well, who wrote the book of Psalms? Who wrote this psalm here? Uh, in this particular one, uh, it's attributed to the sons of Torah. In, of course, most people think King David, the psalm that he wrote, Solomon, Moses was identified as a writer of Psalms, wrote the Psalms, and mostly we don't. So that's kind of the story of that. Well, I mentioned the uh, sons of Korah. Korah, who were they were here? They made it their own suit. I don't know. But uh, last week in this uh, lesson, we talked about the sons of Korah. And Korah was an individual who, along with uh, about 250 Israelite men, Leaders rebelled against Moses. And you can read more about that in Numbers 16, verse 1, the uh, first chapter of Numbers 16, verse 1, starting there. Uh, but he did rebel against Moses, and God punished Korah in these. In, of Israel, and uh, the next day he caused the earth to open up and swallow Israel. Okay, Larry lost power, so we are transitioning to this. All right, we'll 
start back up again. And instead of having everything on, <laughs> on the screen, you're going to have to rely on your, uh, your Bible. And uh, all right, we'll continue on. We, we talked about the sons of Korah. And uh, even though Korah was uh, destroyed by God, his descendants remained. Uh, in uh, as far as uh, a God fearing people, and so you see that they were musically inclined. So, the song that we're the song that we're looking at, I'll quit turning around and looking at that. <laughs> the blue screen, I sure can. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, they are attributed to being the writer of Psalm 46, the sons of Korah. Alma is the next item that we want to terminology we want to look at, and what it means. It's a musical term. Psalms is indeed a song. So uh, this is a musical term. Uh, some believe that this refers to young ladies singing the song in a soprano voice. Uh, others attribute it to being the song is uh, accompanied by an instrument with a high uh, register. And for you music people, you probably know what a high register is. I have no idea. So I assume it's a high uh, sound. So that's uh, Alma. All right. The next uh, item that we're going to look at as far as terminology is the word Selah. Uh, and we're going to see that as we read through this, this psalm, the word Selah, and what it means. Uh, and I want to ask you, do you know people who just can't seem to uh, have any silence in a conversation. If you stop speaking, they start right in. Uh, I used to have a, prof uh, a professor, uh, prof I had a, a supervisor where I worked at Tinker who could not stand silence. And in a conversation with him, as soon as he stopped, we started over again. So it seemed like you never never ended the conversation. Finally, you just had to turn away, you know, walk away. Some people cannot stand silence. But sila is that aspect of being silent and to meditate on what has just been said, or in the case of if it was being sung, what was being sung. So we're going to see that as we read through this song. Okay, We're, those that have Bibles, if you'll turn to Psalm 46, we'll begin reading that. Uh, if I hadn't left my power cord at home, those in here would be able to see it on the board. But uh, I will read it, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. Uh, are there different versions in here? Does it other NIV. NIV. Anybody else? Something different? New American Standard? Parker study. Okay, Parker Study. Well, some of the words were going to be a little different, but uh, maybe you'll be able to uh, discuss that later on as we get into it. So I'm going to begin reading in uh, verse 1 and... Look for the four those in verses two and three and how they might relate to verse one, though. And you might even say, even though. Now, 
when I come to the word Selah, I'm going to pause for about 10 seconds. And we'll see how that works and whether you can think about what has just been read, what you've just read, and, and then also might see how uncomfortable you might be with that pause. Okay, verse one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth given, gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. Verse four, be thinking, what is the river the psalmist is talking about? There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. God, the God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. Verse 8, come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. Okay, well, before we go back and look at individual verses, remember I talked about two questions that I wanted to explore. First one is, when did you know that God was in control? And I'm going to tell my story, and then if you would like to share your story, why well, we would appreciate that. Mine starts back many years ago when Charlene and I were married. It was about uh, year 1965, uh, 66, somewhere in there. Uh, Charlene's sister and her husband were living in Galveston. We were in the Fort Worth area. And we went down to visit them. And Jerry, the brother-in-law, uh, Worked at the Y. He was the director of the Y there in Galveston. And he had men that came in and practiced uh, scuba diving to get their certification. And he had arranged for us to go out on a fishing trip. Not that I was going to scuba dive or, or Jerry, but there was going to be two boats, uh, a boat that was have scuba divers. And then the boat that we were in was just a uh, uh, cabin cruiser type. And we were just going to fish, you know, out of the boat. 
where we were out uh, out of Galveston going towards the uh, 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 oil rigs. And uh, during the day, uh, the fog started rolling in. And it came in, and maybe I've told the story to some of y'all, <laughs> so you'll know what I'm, where I'm going with it. But uh, got uh, more dense, more dense. And pretty soon the guys in the boats said, hey, we better start going back to Galveston before we can't see where we're going. Now, you would think they would know how to get back to where they came from, but that didn't seem to be the case. Uh, some of that might have attributed to the alcohol that was being served on this other boat. I, I don't know, but anyway, it got darker and later, and pretty soon the big tankers coming out of Galveston, we could hear them, couldn't see them. And I don't think they could see us, but we could hear the fog horns, and uh, we would uh, wait to hear the fog horn, and then we would try to, or they would try to, run the boat away from where the foghorn was. So the boats would, or these big tankers wouldn't run over us. One time we were listening and a tanker came out of the fog and I was looking up and I could see the lights and I knew for certain that tanker couldn't see us. And if he ran over us, he would never know. Well, long story short is I finally went down into the cabin, you know, of the boat down below the deck, got my life preserver on. And I realized at that point, I was not in control. Uh, I was totally dependent on what God had in mind for me. Uh, still getting emotional over that. But that's when I realized my life was really dependent on God. I needed him. He didn't need me. So that's when I knew it. And I don't know if you had a similar experience or a different kind of experience, but if you would like to share your story about when you realized that God was in control, uh, I would like to hear it. Any volunteers? Yes, Carol. Dick's going to bring the uh, mic for you. And it's so important that we are not so consumed with activity and scurrying around uh, that we don't look for those times. As it says, to be still and know that, that I am God. Okay, well, the second question I had, too, was meditation. And that's part of being still and knowing God. Uh, my time is uh, that I do this uh, is at night. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't sleep real well. I wake up and then I have to, uh, it takes time for me to get back to sleep. And that is when I think about God. Things are going on in my life. Uh, prayer, that's when I pray for many of you in this class, many of our classmates, others. That's my time to think about God. I, I've, I've heard people talk about when they're driving the car or, or that sort of thing, uh, and that may work for them. Uh, with me, it, it doesn't. I, I have to have quietness. Uh, so that's my time for meditation. That's when I think. That's when I pray. Uh, do you have a time when you meditate? And it may not be when you're laying in bed. You may have a, another posture, maybe where you're sitting quietly uh, in a room, something like that. So anyone like want to talk about your meditation time, your period when you meditate? We can't bring the mic to you, but when I wake up and there's somebody in my room and there's really not. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. <laughs> All right. Any other that anybody would like to share? Okay. Uh, well, let's kind of go back and maybe pick up some uh, verses and, and work through those. If you have any questions about any verse, uh, well, I feel free to bring those up. Uh, I want to start in uh, verse one. It says, God is our refuge and strength. So God is our strength to bear us up under burdens and to fit us for the service and suffering that we might be in too. Okay, when I say God is our refuge, what do you think of refuge? What comes to your mind there? Safe. Safe, okay. Rescue. Rescue, okay. Is, does anybody have a different version that has a different word there? Nope, okay. Some might think of a fortress. God is our fortress. It's a place we run to when we are in trouble. Uh, when I was much younger, I loved to, I say much younger, you know, sixth grade and down, you know, that's grade school. Love to play tag. But when you play tag, you always had a safe place. If you got to your safe place and said, safe, home, you, you didn't, you know, they couldn't tag you. So. That's kind of what this is. There's a place that we go to, and it's God. He is our strength. And that really fits into what we heard this morning in service. And if you haven't gone to first service and you've yet to come to second service, you'll hear that. Randy will talk, into, talk about uh, God being our strength. Okay. Uh, he, is, he helps us. Uh, yes, a present help. And this is kind of the thought that God is not far away. He is right there. He is ready to help us. Uh, two years ago, I guess it was, no, many of you all know Donna Demas. Donna was at our house. She fell, broke a kneecap, called 911. It took 20, maybe 30 minutes before the ambulance actually got there to, to help her to get her to the hospital. God's not like that. He is there ready for us, to help us. So he is ever present. And that's what that kind of uh, refers to. Okay, verse two. Therefore, since God is our refuge and strength, therefore, even though the earth is removed, that means it is totally gone. He is there for us. He is there for us. And though the mountains be carried to the midst of the sea, we talked about mountains being strong, being firm. But if they were to even be thrown into the middle of the sea, God is there to protect us and be with us. Verse 3, another though, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, though the waters roar. Has anybody been in a boat <laughs> when the water was very rough? Lots of waves. Yeah. It is scary. Yeah. Uh, we were uh, on a cruise one time and the waves were so high and the sea and the ocean was so rough that the ship was doing this. And it was so bad that it, it seemed like the, the, that this big cruise ship was going to capsize. Uh, so it can be very, very scary. But even that happens, God is with us. Okay, any thoughts on that? Yes. Right, very good. 
Okay. Well, I think that's the first bell, if I'm right. So we've got about three minutes or so to finish up. Okay. Mary, yes. Um, I would like to say that when you read this passage, you took those pauses. Those pauses were very powerful for me. It, it gave me a chance to imagine those, like the mountains crumbling, and to really think about what that would mean. Thank you. I uh, I thought that was a significant when I first started reading through this. I thought that was very and I was so glad I'd, I'd read that I don't know how many times and didn't realize what that was even talking about. So Selah is very good, and that kind of brings us to our theme verse, verse ten: Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Here we are instructed to be still and to meditate, to focus on knowing God. The seas are murmuring or bickering against what's going on in our lives. The cease from our efforts to control things that we are in fear of and to cease from stress and depression and to and how and what we might be demonstrating to others. Uh, one of the thoughts about being still is to desist, uh, desist, be still, be quiet. So, in finishing up, in conclusion, I'd like, I was going to show you another slide. This is a slide I got from Randy about two weeks ago, uh, his sermon uh, on peace. And I thought, oh, that's really appropriate. That's going to fit in with this lesson today. And it's talked about, and in it he says, peace is not produced by us. It is provided by God. And the two scriptures is John verse 16, chapter 16, verse 32. It says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And then Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So with that, I wish you peace, and we will end with a prayer. Dear God and Father, we come to you and give you thanks. We recognize you as our strength, our fortress, that only in you we will find peace. And it's in this peace that we want to share with others. Forgive us when we stew around and we try to control everything. Help us to realize that you are God and we are not. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.